Hello and welcome to UK Fitness Hub. My name is Travis Tarrant and today we're going to be covering perineal tendonitis. We're going to be going through what it is, what causes it and how to treat it. Let's get into the video. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Now, what does perineal tendonitis actually mean? So perineal means something located or situated on the outside of the calf. Tendons attach muscle to bone and itis means inflammation of. So in this case, we're talking about inflammation of the tendons referring to the outside of the calf. Now there's two perineal tendons, which means there must be two perineal muscles. And in the UK, we call these muscles the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis. And that's because these muscles attach to the fibula. However, you may also have heard these muscles referred to as the perineus longus and the perineus brevis. So I'll refer to them in the UK version in this video and let's get into some of the anatomy. So let's talk a little bit about where these tendons start and finish. So the fibularis longus tendon starts higher up on the fibula and the fibularis brevis tendon starts a little bit lower down. Now, when the fibularis longus tendon meets the brevis tendon and where the brevis tendon starts, they then follow the same path down. So if I come a bit closer and show you, on this little figure here, we've got both the tendons coming on the outside of what we call the lateral malleolus. And then one tendon, which is the brevis tendon, goes to the fifth metatarsal at the lateral tubercle. And the other, which is the longus, goes underneath the arch of the foot and attaches right here at the medial cuneiform. Now, why is this all important? Well, these tendons play a really big role in allowing stability for the foot, allowing us to bear the weight of our bodies. And also, because one goes underneath the foot, actual stability for the arch of our foot. Now, the most common reason that these tendons actually get injured is because of lots of repetition. So what that could be is somebody constantly flexing the foot during running, or in most cases, and more familiar to me, is people that have changed the pattern of their training. So let's take somebody that does no running whatsoever, and all of a sudden they've started doing regular runs every single day. That sudden change in training velocity and uh, mileage can cause this kind of tendonitis, this repetitive strain of the tendons. Another thing to bear in mind is improper footwear. So people that are maybe doing running or sporting activities with the wrong footwear, that would potentially cause a tendonitis issue with the tendons. So let's get into some of the stretches and exercises that we can do to help relieve some of the pains of inflammation of these tendons. First off, we're gonna start by stretching the surrounding muscles. Stretching helps to regain any range of motion lost after injury and can improve tendons elasticity. We're going to start off with the most basic stretch out of the four we're going to cover, which is a banded calf stretch. Start on the floor with your feet in front of you and use a band, belt or towel and wrap it below your toes. Gently pull back until you feel the stretch from the bottom of your foot up to the back of your lower leg. Hold this stretch for 30 seconds on each side for two sets. All of the stretches and exercises covered in this video should be pain free so if anything begins to hurt, it would mean you're not quite ready for that stretch or exercise. A more aggressive version of the first stretch that you can progress onto is a heel drop calf stretch. Find a step and ensure you hold onto something like a banister or railing for balance. Bring one foot onto the step and with the other foot, place it so only your toes are on the step. Begin to drop your heel down towards the floor and the further you drop your heel down, the more abrasive the stretch becomes. All the stretches you want to complete on both sides. This is because the muscles on the non-injured side tend to become tight due to overworking and overcompensating for the injury on the bad side. Complete for two sets, 30 seconds on each side. Next up, we're going to start to stretch the soleus muscle. It's a deeper muscle than the gastrocnemius, and I would hope that you would feel this lower down on the calf and more down to the Achilles tendon. To start, find a wall or sturdy object, and with an elevated foot, bring the heel as close to the wall as possible. If you don't feel anything in this position, 
begin to bring your hips and standing foot closer to the wall to intensify the stretch. Stretching out the soleus over time can improve the flexibility of the calf and ankle. Like the previous stretch, complete for 30 seconds, two sets over on each side. For your last stretch, you have a perineal stretch. Start off seated and cross your foot over the side you would like to stretch. Begin to apply gentle pressure away from your body. So in this clip, I'm stretching the left ankle with my right foot and pushing towards the right hand side. If I was stretching my right ankle, I'd be pushing with my left foot towards the left hand side. You should begin to feel this in the side of the ankle, releasing any tightness in and around the tendons. Only push as far as is comfortable and hold between 15 and 30 seconds, depending on how much you can tolerate. Do this for two sets on each side. Now let's get on to some strengthening exercises. Regular strengthening will help reduce tension and strain on the perineal muscles and help to reduce the chance of re-injury. The fibularis longus and brevis muscles whole purpose is to assist in eversion of the foot. So first up is ankle eversions. Start off seated and begin to evert your foot, which simply means to turn the foot out. The reason I like to do this in a chair is because it's harder to cheat. People cheat by putting their hips out and knees out and this assists in eversion and makes it easier. But we don't wanna make it easier. We wanna isolate the whole movement from the ankle joint itself. If you can do 15 pain free repetitions, you can start to add looped resistance bands like I'm doing here. You can buy different strengths of loop resistance bands to progress this exercise even further. And you're looking to work up to being able to do 15 pain free repetitions with no resistance band before you add a resistance band. Once you can do 15 repetitions, repeat this for three sets and you can then start to progress through the higher strength resistance bands. The second exercise is calf raises into toe raises. We're gonna be combining two exercises together to make one dynamic exercise. To start, hold onto an object for balance and begin to elevate your heels off the ground slowly until you're just on your tiptoes. Lower back down at a count of five and once your entire foot is back in contact with the floor, then begin to raise your foot and toes up as high as you can on the ball of your foot. Remember earlier how we spoke about the fibularis longus tendon and how it runs underneath the foot. The toe raise part of this movement helps to stabilize the ankles and shin as well as strengthening the tendons underneath the foot and in and around the arch. This movement I would highly recommend to those watching with high arches who are more prone to perineal tendonitis. Repeat for 15 repetitions, three sets over. The third exercise is simply a progression from the second. Take all the principles we learned in the second exercise and apply it to this one. The key difference is we're on one leg rather than two. This is a much harder variation due to only having one point of contact with the floor, which allows for the muscles, tendons, and ligaments of the ankle to have to work far harder in order to stabilize and bear the weight of the body. Again, complete 15 repetitions for three sets once the second exercise becomes too easy. Continuing the theme of single leg exercises, next up is a single leg balance. So what's the point in this? Well, it strengthens up the feet, ankles, knees, and hips all in one movement. If balance and stability is poor through a joint, there's a much greater chance of injury. An example of this would be if I was training a trail runner, for example, I'd work on stability so they didn't roll their ankle during a run. If you feel a little wary about the example I'm doing here, feel free to put a chair in front of you so if you do start wobbling, you can quickly grab onto the chair for balance. Aim for 30 seconds for three sets initially, then once you've achieved this, start to steadily increase the seconds. The next progression is a lateral step up. Stand to the side of a step and place your nearest foot on top of the step. Begin to push up off the foot that's on the step and try to stabilize at the top of the movement without putting both your feet down. Slowly lower back under control and repeat this for 15 repetitions on each side for three sets. It's really important when lowering to stick your glutes back. This is important to prevent the knees coming too far forward 
which puts unnecessary pressure on the knee joint. At the final stage of rehabilitation, you can do isometric contractions. An isometric contraction is where you push the muscles against a fixed resistance so no joint or body movement occurs. In this example, I'm using my right foot as the fixed resistance and my left foot is trying to push out towards the camera. Hold for 15 to 30 seconds for two sets on both sides and it's really important that you push at a maximum of 50% of your power. Less is more when it comes to isometric holds. And that concludes the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you do have perineal tendonitis, I hope you feel better soon. If you've learned something new or enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. By subscribing to the channel, you allow me to reach a bigger audience, to reach more people, to help them with free educational content. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to them as soon as possible. You've been watching UK Fitness Hub. My name's Travis Tarrant and I'll see you soon.